Muy buenas tardes a todos. Sean bienvenidos a esta cuarta plática organizada por la carrera de animación de CEDIM de Monterrey. En esta ocasión nos encontramos de manteles largos. Le doy la más cordial bienvenida a nuestro artista invitado, Steven E. Gordon. Welcome, Steven. It's a pleasure to have you here with us, CEDIM de Monterrey. Just, just a little introduction to Steven. With over than 40 years in the industry, Steven works range from being animator, art director, storyboard artist, character animation, animator, layout artist, character designer, to producer, and even a director. One of his first jobs was in the original Lord of the Rings movie in 1978. In the 80s, Steven put his hands and talent in almost everything, like the movie Fire and Ice, Star Chaser, The Legend of Orient, And this movie was made for 3D glasses, for 3D projection. Another classic is The Black Cauldron. The TV, in the TV, he worked in Brave Star, Jane and Holograms, Mighty Mouse, Dino Riders, DuckTales, Winnie the Pooh, The Real Ghostbusters. In the 90s, his projects were The Tiny Toons Adventures, Cool War, Tom and Jerry the movie. Also put his talents on one of my favorites, cartoon of all times, Gargoyles, Gargolas. He worked in Spider-Man TV series, The Tick, Anastasia, The King and I. <laughs> and in the new millennium, just as the 90s, uh, in the new millennium, he began working on X-Men Evolution, Shrek 2, Planet Hulk, Boss Lightyear, Star Command, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Tarzan, Over the Hedge, Terminator Salvation, Transformers Prime, Thor, Archer, Guardians of the Galaxy TV series, Scooby-Doo, Troll Hunters, Adam Family 2, and the list, and the list go on, 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 and on, and on. So here, no, here we not only have an animator, but a complete artist. Here we have a whole life dedicated to this craft. And it's a really lifetime experience to have you here, Steven. Really, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. <clears throat> so, you. for the first question, how did you start in this? Is there, what's, what's the beginning of all? If you want to ask me questions first, that's fine. Or if you want me to just kind of give them a little of my background, that's fine. It's up to you. Uh, oh, you, you can start, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Go start with you with the students. Well, well, hi, everyone. Nice to, well, I don't see you, but nice <laughs> to uh, know you're there. Um, uh, just to give you a little bit more information, he said I've been in the industry for uh, since 1977, way back. And after listening to everything that he was uh, reciting, I feel really old now. So, um, but I started As he said, uh, uh, my first job was Lord of the Rings. I was in high school at the time. And basically, it just started out as a um, portfolio review. I was getting ready to go to art school, getting my portfolio together with my art teacher. And she was uh, said, saw this ad in the trade papers uh, asking for portfolios because they were looking for people. And she thought that'd be a nice way to do a couple of things, take a little bit of the wind out of my sails and also give me a portfolio review. And she was unfortunately wrong about both things for her, but because uh, no one gives portfolio reviews like that. They won't tell you whether they like or dislike it. They just will either call you or they won't. And since I got the job, that didn't take the wind out of my sails by too much since now I'm, was a 17-year-old kid who's now gotten a job on a major motion picture doing art and probably making more than the, my teacher was at the time. So anyway, so I started out on Lord of the Rings uh, just doing miscellaneous uh, drawings. If you've seen that movie, you know that there are a lot of uh, tricky techniques that were being used at the time, you know, where they were taking live action and uh, basically enhancing it a little bit for the orcs and that sub, that type of thing where they needed people to kind of put lines around them and add teeth and you know claws and that type of stuff so that's what they he was Ralph Bakshi was essentially hiring for and from there I uh, happened to be in the right place at the right time when one of the other one, one of the 
actual 2D animators needed an in-betweener. And they decided that I should be given a shot at trying to in-between it for him. And well, that when that started to go well, they started giving me uh, some actual animation to do, which it was basically rotoscopes. It wasn't like I was going to fall on my face or anything. You know, you, you follow the live action, but, you know, I uh, became very proficient at rotoscoping on that film and then several others after that for Ralph. And then a lot of my career has been as a rotoscoper, 2D animator rotoscoper, and knowing how to use it and how not to use it and stuff. So, um, so if, um, I, uh, as you said, I was uh, done a lot of things I, from uh, Bakshi's. I, I was on Fire and Ice. I worked with Frank Frazetta. And from there, after that film was finished, I went with uh, to Disney and worked on, on Black Cauldron and uh, Great Mouse Detective and started development, helping them develop uh, Oliver and Company. But I... Uh, also started doing character design at the same time as freelance and learning to do storyboards. And so I started to branch out. You know, my feeling is in this industry, the more things you can do, the more disciplines you can do and do them well, the better longevity you will have. You, if you can storyboard and do character design and animate and direct, you know, now with uh, all the CG disciplines and stuff, if you can do multiple CG disciplines, that's probably a good thing as well. Um, you know, whether it's uh, actually animating or doing a uh, wireframe or, you know, model construction or, uh, over, you know, hair or crowd control and stuff like that. If you can do any of those multiple things, the better off you'll be, the more employable you'll be. So anyway, so I've been basically keeping busy by mostly since CG has started by doing storyboards and directing mostly TV stuff and doing character design. You know, the big thing that I'm known for is uh, Swan Princess. I did all the character designs on Swan Princess and I was the animation director on that as well as one of the key animators. I did my characters were Odette and Rothbart as well as Bromley on that film. And I also, uh, uh, from there, worked on X-Men Evolution as the character designer and one of the directors, which was a lot of fun because a friend of mine was the producer and he allowed us to, the directors to actually have input into content and story and how, how the whole show was shaped, you know, with going with the whole goth rogue look and, you know, that type of thing. So, uh, you know, I can show you guys samples, if you'd like, of different things I've done on my website. I can... Uh, this is better. Yeah. It will be great, Steven. Okay. Let me uh, yeah. share the screen and see if I can get this up and working. Okay. Uh, do you see it? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Let me... Uh, I'll just... Uh, I'll show you some of the animation. Hope I'll see if that works. Uh, let me see if I've got, I think I've got some uh, Lord of the Rings. Thought I had the, oh, here we go. This is the first big scene I animated. Whoops. Uh, now it decided. Let's see. It's all rotoscope, of course, but it was, it was a bear. It was a very long scene and complicated with all the fabric and capes and stuff. What was the process, Stephen, when you were rotoscoping back in the, in the 70s? Yes, this <laughs> was right? back in 1977 or 78, probably 77. And I was, you know, they shot live actors to, and horses, obviously. And I basically had to make them look like the characters and follow the action. And that was the first taste of animation that I actually had. And from there, it was, uh, then I kept going. Um, I'll show you some, one of the... You, you only uh, rotoscope the characters or the, the background? No, the not the, the background was done by so, a painter and no. someone else. And I did the, uh, I just did the characters riding the horses. 
and then oh. someone put them together, you know, in a two D way. Yeah. So, so, um, but since then I've done other things. You know, here's you know some holly dancing. I didn't do these miscellaneous characters, but it, slowly we work our way over to uh, the character. And once again, rotoscope reference. This is a lot less tighter than the Lord of the Rings stuff. Yeah. But th this character is who I did. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the film Cool World. Yeah, but it's, it, I saw it. Okay, it starred Gabriel Byrne and Brad Pitt, Brad, one of Brad Pitt's first films. And Kim Basinger, right? Hmm? Kim Batching. Basinger was... was Kim Basinger, guy. yeah, Kim Basinger played her, yes. For example, in this, in this one, uh, you have the proportions of, uh, I don't know, Kim Basinger, a real proportion. How you manage to make the, the rotoscoping and, and change? I don't well, know the I mean, it's, it's a matter of, um, it, it, actually, it wasn't her. She did the voice. Oh, the, right. There was a dancer that they hired to do this. And um, I, basically, I, I was given a model, and I had to pull her on model, obviously. Obviously, a real woman didn't look like this because you know, <laughs> no one's got that tiny a waist or longer legs and stuff. So I had to kind of use my imagination to pull it on the model. Yeah. So, and uh, let me show you one of the more recent things I've done. Um, let's see, as far as animation goes. Let's see if this is it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This, this is just a pencil test, but this is for X-Men Evolution. And this was also based on live action, but I had to go in and obviously play with it and make it work for our characters and change things so that it, it made sense. So, so that's... Uh, animation that I've done. I mean, uh, you know, here's some black cauldron just to kind of see what I can do without rotoscope, if that happens. <laughs> yeah. uh, if it starts, there we go. These are a lot of the scenes I did for uh, black cauldron. No rotoscope involved. Uh, and don't, don't rotoscoping, that's just uh, normal animation. Yes, just real animation. Real animation. Yes. <laughs> this uh, this was a Disney picture, right? What? This was a Disney, Disney picture. This is a Disney picture. How you feel working with uh, at that time working with? It was your first work, uh, the first job uh, with Disney, or? Yes, this is uh, I was uh, one of the first people they hired off the street, I guess, to actually be an animator, and it kind of ruffled a few feathers because usually you had to work your way up. But since I've been animating for a while, they needed people and they hired me to actually animate for them. So I didn't stay too long, unfortunately, but, you know, that's, uh, you know, I was smart enough to leave as I like to say, joke that uh, before they actually started making big hits. Okay. I got to work on the films that weren't big hits for them, so. Uh, you have jobs in the in the TV industry and the and, and, and movies. Uh, what what kind of job do you prefer in TV? Uh, well, it depends. Movies? If I'm, I, I like some TV and I like some film. <laughs> uh, if I'm going to animate, I'd prefer to do it for film. I think yeah. features uh, or storyboard. I'd prefer to do it for features. Directing, I'm. I'm Perfectly fine doing character or character design or or directing for TV and stuff. That that's good with me. You know, in storyboards I'm not as thrilled with doing for TV, but you know, it's it's a very much it's higher pressure and tighter deadlines and stuff. In, in TV, it's, it's more it's more tired. Yeah, it is a lot very short time to do it. Let me show you some storyboard work. Okay. Um, Uh, this is this is before computer. This one. I mean, I, I before I, uh, Cintiqs. Yeah. And this was drawn by hand and then imported into Photoshop to to play with a little bit. 
back when you could actually kind of render the drawings a little bit, make them prettier. This was for a movie that was not very good, but I like still like the storyboards on it. Okay. I mean, this was an early CG movie and it was very bad CG. So it kind of killed anything that we tried to set up. So that's a, you know, a 2D storyboard. The sequence. Yeah, let me, sh and this one is one I, this was a live action film that I worked on, The Jungle Book for uh, John Favreau. Yeah. The live, uh, CG live action. This is him running through the, uh, the uh, high grass when a stampede occurs. And this is all done on CG, or on Cintiq with Photoshop. Right now you, you work, uh, you still work in paper, Stephen, or? No, no, very rarely do paper. The only time I use paper is uh, generally when uh, I'm at a convention and I'm doing uh, art for people, you know, uh, commissions and stuff. So generally, um, usually don't work in, on paper these days. It's almost all digital these days. Everything is digital. For the students, you, you could say that uh, uh, an advice or they can use they can use paper from time to time or yeah oh yes I, I would I would learn you know do your drawing on paper it's important though to be familiar with the digital tools though because everything is depending on a digital pipeline um, in fact Photoshop is very very important knowing Photoshop pretty well and um, and if you're into storyboards you, even though I don't like the program. Yeah, learning Storyboard Pro is essential if you want to work on storyboards and TV. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the program of choice. But if you can learn to use Photoshop, you can pretty much do almost anything uh, other than, you know, you learning to animate with Maya and all that other stuff. It's a yeah. whole another kettle of fish. So, yeah. So, so Stephen, uh, uh, you have over 40 years of experience. What change have you seen in the industry since you start? Well, the obvious is digital. I mean, digital. even, you know, when I was showing you the uh, storyboard, you know, it used to be, you you, you know, take a, uh, a Prismacolor pencil or something or grease pencils or whatever and kind of have fun shading and rendering out stuff. And now uh, it's almost all about line work and, you know, getting the image simple, you know, it's all, you know, being done by digitally these days. I mean, that's the big thing. Um, the other thing, which is a more recent thing, is the fact that finally, at least in America, they're starting to recognize something that other countries have always recognized, the fact that animation doesn't have to just be for kids. It can now yeah. be for anyone older too, you know, all the way to adults, you know, like they, you know, Netflix was playing Arcane. Uh, I don't know how many of you seen that based on a video game or something. And it was just magnificent, but it was definitely not for children. I'm not sure children could sit through it without, you know, having trauma. So, yeah. so I mean, th those are the kind of the big notes about what has changed over the last few years since I've been in the business. And you have to, it used to be, as you mentioned that I, uh, I mentioned that I came in just on the strength of my portfolio and got a job because I could draw. I don't think that would be the case anymore. Now you have to learn, you have to go to school, you have to learn uh, computer programs, you have to learn how to do, um, use certain things like Maya and other digital things, you can't just be someone who draws well and manage to get in. It, I mean, there may still be positions for that, but those are very few and far between now. So, you know, our union that 
animation union has 6,000 people in it, which is huge compared when I was in it, it was like probably under a thousand when I first got in it. And it's now, I'd say most of those people probably work in CG. Yeah. In one way or another. So, but uh, I think we, we got a, a boom of t 2D recently, right? I think uh, uh, 2D animation. We have a boom. We a, have boom? A, a boom. boom. Yeah, yes. Th there's a lot going on. There's a tremendous amount. Everyone is suddenly getting in, wanting to do, produce animation. Uh, used to be back when I got in it, Ralph Bakshi was the outlier. You know, there was either Disney or um, Hanna Barbera and you know, small places like that, Filmation, that were doing TV. But Bakshi was about the only one doing other feature work outside of Disney. Now it's, you you can't walk down the street without stumbling across an animated movie or someone mm -hmm. trying to do something. And all the major studios are doing it. A lot of small studios are popping up to do it. And it's, yeah, the, the I mean, I, there must be hundreds of studios that are producing animation right now. So... Uh, you know, maybe now is a good time. Anyone else have any questions? Or I mean, if you've got more, feel free. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, we, <laughs> we have so, a lot of questions. Uh, a, a, a very, I don't know, something that uh, I think is very important for the students is what a student needs to learn while, while studying, then, then to stay focused during their career. What, what is the, the more important thing to, to, to well, learn I, for a student? I, I think, generally speaking, you, you need to learn certain things. Uh, draftsmanship is not a bad thing. If you can learn to draw, you work on that. The more, the better you are at drawing, the better your career will be. I think. Um, and learning how to storyboard, which actually takes into directing and editing, and a lot of layout. If you can learn. Those things, there aren't a lot of books out there on there, but there are a few. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of the teachers where you are and other places are teaching storyboarding because that's one of the biggest and most important jobs in animation. I mean, nothing gets done without storyboards. And it's and in features, they get done and redone and redone and over and over. So the better you are learning that, knowing how to put two scenes together and how to stage things and how to make something interesting and lead to uh, a, a certain feeling in your sequence, it's important, so. We have a student here asking, Natalia is asking, how can we practice the animation while we're studying? Uh, how can you practice? I mean, there, there are programs uh, that you could use at home. I, I would guess that maybe some of your uh, uh, classes involve those programs. But uh, where, where are you saying uh, Harmony 21? Yeah, Harmony. I used Harmony on Space Jam when I was animating yeah. on Space Jam 2. Uh, I understand there's better programs, like Paint is supposed to be a better program than that. I've never used it, so I can't speak to that. But everyone, every other animator I've spoken to says that they'd prefer Paint but for some reason Warner Brothers wanted to use Harmony. But I mean, you can do all these things now at home as opposed to back when I started, you had to, you know, it was all on paper and then you had to find a way to shoot a test or something to see if it was working. Now you've got all the components at home if you have a good computer and uh, these programs and stuff, so. And the same goes for storyboarding too. You can learn, teach yourself to storyboard to some degree or, or practice storyboarding at home by using uh, uh, Photoshop and Bridge even. You don't need Storyboard Pro necessarily. You could just use Bridge attached to Storyboard, uh, to Photoshop, so. So uh, Stephen, uh, what are the most common mistakes you can make as a student at the beginning where in your um, career when you finish the, the, the school? What is the, com the most common mistakes? The, uh, common mistakes? Boy, um, I, I, thinking you know too much, maybe. <laughs> I mean, but that's pretty typical. I, you know, I thought I knew too much early on, and I had to figure out that I needed to learn <laughs> more. I mean, finding someone who will help you and guide you probably helps. 
Um, and the biggest mistake I think that some people make, and you, you're seeing this even with some of the big animators and stuff that were back in the day, in the 90s and stuff, is not learning to do other things. Uh, when all you can do is one thing, then that kind of limits the amount of jobs you can apply for. And it makes your career much more difficult to uh, keep going. So you have to expand your yes your skills and your knowledge yes it get very you be willing to do almost anything with a reason obviously to uh, uh, as a job so uh, Stephen, we have here a lot of questions uh, natalia asked uh, as an experienced person in the industry talking about you have you seen improvement in the role that the women have had in the industry Well, yes, I, I have actually. I, I, you know, I can't speak to whether or not it's been perfect because I'm not a woman. But I just personally, I've seen a lot of women taking positions of um, supervising, being in charge. You know, a lot of the producers are women. Uh, I've worked with a lot of directors that are female. Um, you know, it, it to me, it doesn't seem to be as locked off but then i'm not a woman applying for jobs so I, well, but <laughs> yeah but it, it, i i interact with women all the time in fact sometimes it's surprising when it's like oh i'm on a crew of people and then there's no women it, it seems almost surprising and i don't know that it's because they're women that they're being left off it's just they were applying elsewhere i know a lot of women in the business that are very busy that keep very busy, jump from one job to another without any problem. I wish I could be so lucky, so. Very, very interesting. Uh, Regina Aki asks us, uh, how was your, uh, your freehand experience watching and experiencing the evolution and modernization in the industry? How was that, um, I, I, I think here first of all, how was the process that you live when the things were changing so fast? With the tools, well, the oh, uh, well, I, I kind of was lucky in the fact that um, it is for me. It started on um, X Men Evolution, learning the tools. Uh, my producer was really, really into Photoshop, and he actually, you know, had a computer in his office in Photoshop, and he would do some stuff with it and whatnot. He'd he'd take a lot of my model drawings and paint them to start and. And the uh, woman who was doing color design was working on a computer. And so I started to slowly learn some stuff just by looking over his shoulder and stuff. And then I eventually started to do some of it myself in a very um, crude way. I would uh, do drawings and then scan them in and then play with them in Photoshop a little bit and teach myself some stuff. And then eventually... You know, after years of doing that, this is all before Satiques and whatnot. And, I mean, I think Photoshop was around and uh, and you'd have a, um, a touchpad you know, or, you know, something with you, a stylus and a pad yeah. that you'd use that you'd have to have eye coordination for to actually draw and stuff. Or, But, you know, it, 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 you know, I, I came in pretty early and so it, it just became kind of ingrained. But... On the other hand, there are certain programs that other people are using that I'm just like, boy, I don't get it. I can't, you know, I, I have trouble. I struggle with them and whatnot. You know, like, a, for instance, on a, I'm working on a show that uses Storyboard Pro. And I don't draw in Storyboard Pro. I don't like the tools that they use. And I think it's clumsy. So what I do is I do my entire sequence in uh, Photoshop. And then I import it into Storyboard Pro. <laughs> So oh, okay. I kind of find a workaround. So maybe we can send them a few tips to to Toon Boom. Yeah, <laughs> to fix to fix. Yeah, the yeah. Unfortunately, Toon Boom it, it was developed mainly by uh, computer people, and not artists and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it's kind of a problem. <laughs> it, it's very clumsy and glitchy, in okay. my opinion. Especially Harmony, I found very glitchy, but. We have here another question. What tips can you give to improve the portfolio and skills on animation? Um, that's 
difficult. Uh, well, everything has to be online now. I, I assume all of your people and students and whatnot are working, you know, have portfolios online. No one has a real portfolio, I would hope, these days. I mean, that, that stopped a long time ago uh, when you would actually have, you know, some, you know, I used to look at, you know, stacks and stacks of portfolios, real portfolios, mm -hmm. and then you have to have people pick them up or send them back or whatever. Nowadays, it's all online. You have to have a website or some sort of way to give a link to someone. So that said, I, I think what you need to do is, it depends on what you're doing, but I would break it down to different things, character design, if that's what you're interested in, storyboard, um, you know, if you're doing illustration or, or backgrounds, or if you've got some actual animation, you, you put those up and always only put up the work that you're most proud of and that, you know, other people liked that you did for them. You know, um, never put up, well, they're get, they're, you know, stuff that you say, oh, they don't understand. I was just looking and experimenting. It's like, don't show anyone anything um, that you don't think is the best. Just, you just put the best that you have in your portfolio. Yes. Okay, very, very good advice. And uh, another advice, but some people, I think they, they want to work with you. Any advice to get into the industry? <laughs> um, networking is a big, big thing. Yeah. You really have to make sure you know the right people, unfortunately. Um, but there are tons and tons of jobs So if you know someone who's looking, then you stand a better chance of someone who uh, doesn't know that person. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, being good is a big part of it, but you really have to know someone to get in. Um, it's all networking. And you, even if you don't know someone, then you have to try to find someone to get to know. And with social media and stuff like that, it's a lot easier. My day, you had to go to parties and stuff or uh, hang out after work and get drunk or something. But uh, <laughs> now you can actually just go onto Facebook or, or LinkedIn or, you know, some of those things. You know, LinkedIn has actually become very big. Um, not so much for networking, but that's where the recruiters are all hanging out. And, you know, they always advertise on LinkedIn and stuff, so... You, you, and when they do that, you know that they're actually looking. Some of these job sites and stuff, they, they may advertise for a job, but it might be three months old already by the time it's up there and stuff. Whereas the recruiters, they, they're looking and they're, they want to find someone yesterday. So Nowadays, so you, you, you can find, find out really quickly, really quickly if there is someone needs a... Yeah, yeah. It, you, know, you know, if you go on LinkedIn... Today, and you know, if you find the, the recruiters, you will see it. You know, there, I'd say at least once or twice a week, I see a recruiter looking for something specific. I mean, sometimes it's just production work, you know, you, you know, a, a, a production manager or production assistant. But that, and that's another way to get in is to be a production assistant or something. I've known several production assistants that have moved off from being production assistants and moved into drawing, or, you know working in the art and stuff. And the same goes for uh, if, if you can find a job doing corrections or, or retakes or whatever, you know, you, it's a step in. So it's not easy, but it's a lot easier than it used to be. So, and especially since there's so many places looking, there's only so many people that are in the union. So, yeah. or, you know, I, I know you guys down there aren't union, but, you know, There's a lot of places looking. And nowadays, it doesn't matter where you live. Like on one of the uh, jobs I'm on now, uh, one of the character designers lives in Nigeria. So, okay. So, we have a very interesting question here, Dana Rocio. Have you worked in more than one department of animation in a single production? Yes. Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, but, uh, For example, X-Men Evolution, I was one of the episode directors and I was the character designer. So I basically had two full-time jobs. And on Swan Princess, for example, I was the animation director. So I was telling other people how to correct their animation or working with them to get the best animation. And I was also doing the character designs. And I was also doing my own animation. 
So it's not unusual, especially the smaller productions, to do more than one job. It's, you know, if you're working at Disney, maybe you know, on a feature, chances are good you're only going to do one thing, you know, wh whatever it is. But if you're working at a smaller place, there's a good chance you might do several things. And if you can do it, that's great because that, you know, gives you experience doing those things and it also makes you more valuable on that production. So. How do you uh, fix your own animation? Do you, do you, did you ask uh, opinion for other animation? <laughs> well, actually, looking back on Swan Princess, I think I wish I could have had more time to uh, have someone review it or uh, spent more time reviewing it. Unfortunately, that was such a small production that everything I did almost had to just go forward, and I never got to see stuff uh, when it was in between. I would have probably fixed stuff after it was in between. And I, because I had to keep, you know, I was kind of the stopgap where making up for uh, other people being slow and, you know, making sure that the film got finished, you know, without me, the film maybe would not have been finished because, but I had to do at a certain point towards the end, I was doing like 60 feet a week. And wow. unfortunately I did not have a chance to correct it, my footage often. And I wish I had, you know, looking back on the footage, I, I look at it and think, I would have changed that if I'd had a moment to breathe. But yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, did you, I didn't. Did you prefer staying, Maxine, uh, 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 with uh, just drawing? Or did you like the, the director, director chair? I, I, I don't mind telling people what to do. <laughs> to fix it. That's, that, that's got its own uh, uh, set of... Uh, good things to it. Uh, I, you know, I, I do like drawing, but, and like I said, it depends on what the production is. You know, there are certain productions that I'm not necessarily the person to do the drawing. Like, you know, I was just on a SpongeBob movie and I'm not really a SpongeBob type of artist. And so, you know, they gave me all the live action stuff to do and whatnot, but so that didn't matter. But if I were full time on a SpongeBob thing, I wouldn't mind being a director on it because I think I could direct people to do it, but I may not be the person I would hire to do the actual drawing, so. We have here another question. Valeria asked, what was the movie you liked the most animating? Um, well, it, it is two. I mean, I, I really liked working on Swan Princess because I was involved in creating yeah. in a creative way. But as far as, Uh, a, a feature with my the animation that I liked best, it was probably Black Cauldron because I got to slow down considerably. Yeah. I was able to take time and do a scene over and over until it was just right, which is sort of a nice thing that Disney allows or allowed. I assume they still do, you know, because of you know the schedules were uh, had more cushion in them and um, and they had more money, so. You know, they would make sure the scene got right, which I often in my uh, career have not had a chance to do, like I described on Swan Princess. Sometimes it's just like one and done. So, uh, oh, one and oh. uh, we have another question. Hi, Stephen. How do you recommend organizing a portfolio specifically for a storyboard or character design position? Um. Well, if let me uh, go back to mine again. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is the perfect way to do it, but this is the way I have done it. Um, and I did not do this myself. I hired someone to do it. Well, basically, I you've got a, a, a portfolio page that then has everything blocked out. And I, you know, I guess it could have been on pages, but in this case, I just had them scroll down. And so you click down to something, you know, these are character designs and, you know, the, and you can, you know, blow each of them up and then scroll through them if you want. And the same with um, uh, storyboards. I think I showed you some of the storyboards where I, they got converted into PDFs. So you could scroll through them, which I think is better, in my opinion, than having a uh, storyboard pro reel, because then you can't, 
you, you're looking at other things and you're not necessarily looking at the storyboard. You're looking at the, the direction and the, uh, um, and the sound and other things, you know, um, you know, like the, these are actual, uh, this this was done for a musical sequence, so it made more sense to show the do you prefer having the the, the PDF uh, than, than the animation yes I, I prefer the the uh, PDFs yeah. because I think it allows whoever's looking to hire to actually look and say oh I see how you cut together scenes or I see your layout I think it's a better way to present your stuff but I don't know what other people I'm not in the, currently I'm not hiring people and looking at portfolios mm -hmm. so I'm not sure what other people necessarily will do you know uh, for directing I, I put together reels and then episodes of things uh, you know like this is a compilation reel okay I don't know, it should be sound, but oh, there we go. And this is just something I put together with an editor. But that, because when you're directing, you want to be able to show the whole package and say, this is what it will, what I can finally come down to, as opposed to uh, the components of that. Anyway, but that do kind you, of gives you an idea. Do you, do you prefer action scenes or hmm? what kind of, do you prefer action scenes when you're animated or what um, kind of, of scenes do you prefer? When, when I'm animating and storyboarding, I prefer acting yeah. and emotional stuff and character driven stuff. Uh, when I'm animating, uh, I tend to get, be given the action stuff just because I, that's kind of where you know, I'm a, I'm a good draftsman and I know how to move bodies and stuff. So it just varies. I mean, what I prefer is not always what I'm given. So it's, you know, you know I, I do a lot of dancing stuff when I'm uh, animating too. So, so it just depends. Depends on the, on the project. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm flexible, <laughs> but when I am storyboarding, I, I don't, I'm not a big uh, story action storyboarder. I tend to, uh, I like directing it, uh, like you saw some of those things. Those were all directing and action scenes. But I tend to, uh, if I'm storyboarding, I like kind of doing the human connection, the emotional stuff. Yeah. So. We, we have this very interesting question. Valeria uh, asks ask, ask you, how did you discover the world of animation? What inspired you to be an animator? What was the first thing that you, that you saw that I want well, to be? Well, actually, you know, obviously as a kid, you know, I, I watched Disney films and all types of TV stuff and whatever, you know, but I never really considered being in the animation industry. I was planning on being an illustrator. Um, that was my goal. And then I think as, as I described, my uh, uh, art teacher at the time saw the portfolio request or the trade paper and, and I really still then didn't have any interest, but I thought, okay, I'll get a review or whatever and see. But before that happened, I took a girlfriend when I was in high school to see Wizards. And I thought, well, that now that looks interesting. That looks like it could be fun. That was the first time I, I watched animation thinking I, I thought I could have fun doing that, but I still didn't pursue it at that point. Mm -hmm. And even when I was on Lord of the Rings, I, uh, thought, okay, well, this is a good summer job or a good job. When I'm done with this, I'll go, you know, go back 
to college. I'll go to college and you know learn, continue my job, my learning, uh, schooling to be an illustrator. And that never happened. Obviously, I stayed in animation. So, you know, as a, a girlfriend who was the son of a Disney animator at the time told me that no one gets out of animation. It's too hard to get out of animation. The pay is too good, and it's just easy to fall into. And, you know, it has been, I guess. <laughs> Life pu pushed you to <laughs> dedicate yourself to, to this. You, you didn't plan. plan yeah, to. yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't plan. So it kind of takes over. We have here another question. <clears throat> He said that uh, what's something you learn later with what's something you learn later with time that isn't very no. This is isn't very no. I don't like that. I understand the question. I think that, <clears throat> that something that you learned in the past, uh, some technical something that uh, to, today the, the, you don't use it, or it's not uh, very useful. I don't know, something that when you start. Your, your career? Huh. Uh, something I learned way back that didn't, yes. didn't help me later on? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I think it has all helped in one form or another. I, mean, I, I wish I'd known then what I know now, some of the things. I would have taken things more seriously or uh, been less sloppy about some of my stuff. Um, and I would have would not have quit certain jobs. <laughs> Yeah, you know, for example, you know, I, like I said, I left Disney before they actually started producing uh, uh, hits. I mean, if I'd been smart and could go back in time, I'd stay there and would have been there for the 90s and stuff. But I left before that because it looked like they actually they were closing down. So I thought I was being the smart one and turned out I wasn't. So, you know, it's, you know, you live and learn. So. Mm -hmm. Carla asks us about the 3D guys. What do you think about 3D and the Revolution apps? Uh, I'm not sure what the Revolution apps are, um, but 3D, I think, has been a big boon for the industry. I think even though most many artists don't necessarily like 3D, they prefer 2D if you, act, you know, actually talk to artists, but... I think the audiences like 3D a lot better, uh, or CG. I think that the audiences, for whatever reason, have glommed onto it a lot more than they ever did 2D. I, you know, that's why suddenly we're seeing everyone producing uh, CG films as opposed to uh, a 2D. I mean, there were very few 2D films being made, and the audience didn't really care that much you know they'd go to see the disney film when it yeah. came out or been reissued or whatever but you know you know i think uh, lord of the rings when it came out was one of the biggest non-disney 2d films and i think it barely you know it didn't make much money but it was still actually a big film that was done in 2d that wasn't done by disney so i think i just think that you know cg has helped the industry a lot So, Steven, do you think that with so much technological help, with so much software, computers, everything, artists have become a little lazy? Uh, no, I don't necessarily think so. I think actually, in a lot of ways, artists have to become uh, computer technicians too, to some degree. I mean, anytime you've worked on some of these programs, you, you always find yourself at some point having to research and figure out how to do something. Um, when I was on Space Jam, for example, we had to have full-time IT guys that we could call and work with. Uh, and we'd spend time futzing with our computers and futzing with the program to try to get it to do what we wanted. I, you know, I don't know that I'd call that lazy. Uh, it's a different thing than if you're doing tons and tons of drawings. Um, I, I, You know, clearly, you know, maybe the person is thinking of like a storyboard pro or something where you can reuse everything over and over and just alter something a little bit. That depends on the person. I think that is sort of something that happens a lot in storyboard pro or programs like that. But I think if someone is a good artist, they will use that to help them 
as opposed to use it as a crutch. Um, you know, often I will, when I'm doing a storyboard, I will, you know, take a head and, you know, uh, copy it and turn it and, you know, or twist it or tilt it or whatever, and then just change the expression. And it saves me a little bit of drawing. So I guess that's being a little lazy, but before what I would do is I would just do the light box and do it, put it underneath the piece of paper and turn it. And so I'm not sure it's that different. It just depends. I, I don't think there's a huge amount of laziness. I think there's a, a lot of people, you know, I, I don't do CG animation, but I know people that do. And boy, it seems like a lot of work to me. I, I'm too lazy to do that, frankly. <laughs> so so I, I think there's plenty of jobs that are very hard and take full time and you can't be lazy to do them. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's too much, uh, it's too, yeah. too much apps, too much knowledge that uh, you have to yeah. know for and ultimately, yeah. ultimately, this you still have to make the stories work and the direction and the editing and stuff. <laughs> Good animation will not save a bad story. I mean, we see that yeah. over and over. Um, but yeah. you know. A good story can have less than great animation and it would still work. You know, like, you know, for example, Swan Princess, even though I don't think my animation was all that great, I don't think anyone notices or cares because they really love the story if they like that movie. But, you know, if uh, I don't think having great animation in it would have made it better or made it uh, even more popular or anything, I think it, it, it's the story that people glom onto and the music and the you know, all of the components put together, so. It's always the story, always the characters, right? Yes, exactly, yes. And I think, you know, I think, you know, like a, a recent film just came out that I thought the story was a, a mess, but everyone likes the characters in it and the music or whatever, and so people seem very happy with it, but story-wise, it falls apart pretty quick. So, yeah, that's, but, you know, you see, <laughs> that's, there's no accounting. I mean, they're, they're, unfortunately, sometimes a good song in the middle of a movie will fix, make a, a movie a great hit, even if it's a, a bad story. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, Ingrid Marquez asks, uh, who, are you, who are your favorite artists? Uh, who are my favorite artists? Yes. Uh, I come from kind of a comic book background to some degree. So a lot of the artists that I really like are comic book artists. Um, and illustrators, you know, like, you know, Frank Frazetta, obviously, and, uh, you know, John Buscema and Jack Kirby and um, uh, Gil Kane. And, you know, there are a lot of uh, great artists out there right now, too many to actually name and stuff. But, uh, and, and, you know, there are animators like my favorite animator still to this day is probably uh, Milk Call. I like what he did, John Lounsbury and several others like that. So, what what can we we learn from from that kind of artist, uh, Stephen? What, what what kind of um, of, uh, of process of that kind of spirit that the 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 guys have to to <laughs> to make some to, to make that kind of thing that made that things that. You, you, you may, what kind of approach you have you every day? I don't know, the, 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 um, way, oh, oh, the, the way you look, you like, see your life. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, every project is different and it, you have to find what works for that project. You know, some need a dynamic way of working, you know, dynamic drawing and dynamic angles and stuff. And others want to be very simple and direct. I think it, it, it all depends. I think you have to kind of look at the project you're on and kind of figure out where what it needs to be or wants to be and stuff and go with that. And, you know, you just have to be open to whatever that is. And sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong, but it's, uh, you know, I think, you know, there's a, such a variety of stuff out there now that, you know, I, I'd say almost anyone could probably find something that suits them. It's like life, life with no regrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, we we have another question. Uh, well, this is interesting. Uh, which is your favorite animated series? 
which is my favorite animated series. Mm-hmm. Well, right now, like I mentioned, I think Arcane is great. Yeah, you know, I, I look at that and go, you know, a lot of times I'll watch a show, a uh, series or something and think, you know, I, I really could have helped them on that. If I'd been, if they'd hired me, I could have, you know, given them, done something and fixed it or made it better. Uh, in the case of Arcane, I'm watching them going, nope, you know, they didn't need me at all. It was wonderful. And there's nothing, I mean, I would love to have worked on it, but there's, I'm not looking at it and thinking, ah, I could have really helped them do this better, or, you know. So I, I think Arcane is just heads and shoulders above almost anything else that's been done so far. So. Uh, what what advice what advice would you leave to students for the future? What, what, what advice? What, what is the that thing that the, that you if I already, if, if I only know that? Uh, well, I. I would say, I mean, it used to be you'd tell people to keep drawing over and over and over. Nowadays, I think it's it's that, but it's also keep learning as much as you can. I mean, even once you graduate, um, and even if you get a job or when you get a job, uh, keep learning. Keep, keep learning every, everything new that comes along. Uh, you know, I know a lot of uh, uh, CG animators that still take classes online with other CG animators to try to improve their work and stuff. I think there's always something you can learn. I, I don't think it's, you learn something and then you're done. I think, you know, even myself, I, I, I'll watch something that someone else has done and think, okay, how could I do that? You know, that I could learn from that and stuff. So I think always learning something and being willing to be open to new ideas is important. Yeah. We have another question here. What is the thing that gave you the most pride in life? Uh, in life? Yeah, or, uh, well, uh, a project or in life in general? Well, I mean, obviously, raising a family <laughs> has been important. Very uh, important. Yes. But, you know, in, in the business, uh, I'd say X-Men Evolution is kind of the hallmark for me, especially when I go to conventions and stuff and see how many people that that show has affected and stuff, you know, hearing from a lot of fans and stuff. You know, I've got fans from other stuff and everything else, but x Evolution seems to have really been important to a lot of people. I mean, uh, you know, I, that especially people at that certain age or whatever that are discovering themselves and stuff, they really took a lot of what we did in x Evolution to heart and were able to relate to it and figure themselves out from it and whatnot. So I'd say that was a big deal. You know, I don't know that I knew that ahead of time or even as we were working on it. We just thought it was kind of a job and enjoying it. But, you know, once I started going to conventions and meeting fans of it and stuff, it, it kind of, you know, made me realize how important it was to people. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> uh, we have another question. Do you like anime and that kind of animation? Uh, somewhat, yeah. I, I, I don't watch a lot of it because... When, a lot of when I'm watching TV or have TV on, I'm working. And so I can't really uh, be watching um, you know, subtitles and stuff. So I don't watch a ton of anime. Uh, but, you know, I, you know, I'm well familiar with Ghost in the Shell, and the early anime, Aki, Akima, and Akira. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, things like that. You know, uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kurosawa and you know, and, um, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of that type of stuff. I'm familiar with. I, you know, I've, I've got friends that can talk about anime, the current anime stuff, and everything else currently, and that's not me. And and frankly, a lot of people in the business are really into it. And but I, I'm just not that person. I, like I said, I don't have the time really to sit and watch it and stuff. So. You know, I'm working too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very good. What do you think is the hardest part of being an animator? Finding work, finding <laughs> your next job. And it, 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 it used to be you could be at one place for a long time, and um, you, you'd be fine forever. You know, but now it, it's much more. Um, 
nomadic where you're going from job to job. And sometimes it's six months here, sometimes a year there, sometimes three months here. And every time that that previous job is ending, you have to go through the hassle of trying to find the next one. And that's the hard top time because that's when you start doubting yourself and you start wondering why will why did I seem perfect for that job why won't they hire me you know and you know it's just tough it's tough for everyone and there even though there are a lot of jobs out there there are also a lot of people out there so and in that that thing that you that you say that about the family how do you reconcile family with work and all changes in the in the work well I, I've always done what I'm doing now, but a lot of, which is working from home. Um, even before, you know, the pandemic and everything else, I've always worked from home. Like at Swan Princess, which was done in, uh, I don't know, 25 years ago or something, I did most of that work from home. I lived up in the mountains and I would go down once or twice a week and I would look at videotape and stuff and Whatnot, but mostly I was working at home, which allowed me to be with my family. Mm -hmm. And I could then not necessarily work nine to six. I could work, you know, five to four, or I could take a big break in the middle of the day, but work on the weekend or, you know, make my own hours. So I, I was able to do it fairly well. And nowadays th that's pretty much the norm. You know, you have to be available for meetings, but pretty much uh, as long as you're, Uh, with your family, you, you can make things work a little better. At least I find that to be the case. And you know, maybe some people can't figure out how to work with their family around. I don't know. So we we have here questions. I know we don't have very large industry in Mexico, right? Uh, uh, 3D or 2D animation. We have uh, our or projects uh, here and there, but uh, some some students ask ask you, what do you experience with the Mexican industry? Would you mind leaving here as a 2D animator? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it might be, a, you know, we've actually considered when I retire, maybe moving to Mexico, uh, but it, it's definitely You're a possibility. Welcome. And I don't know what the industry is like. And, you know, I haven't explored it too much. I know that and there are a few people I know that work down there and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I don't know whether or not there's a lot of work or not. I mean, you'd know that better than I would, I would hope. Yeah, yeah, we, we, uh, we're trying to, to build some. There are yeah. a lot of people. There Good. are a lot of people. We're trying to, to build a, a, an industry, but uh, we, we are. We're, Good. So maybe yeah, when I retire, uh, I can come down there and uh, get work. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, you hear Malikov? That was your question. No, some some student, the student asked the question. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe Steven comes to work with you sometime in the future. Uh, uh, someone asked, uh, I think you already answered uh, this kind of question. What's your favorite production that you work in? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, uh, I think you already asked. Uh, I already responded to this kind of question. There's, uh, what's your favorite production that you work in? Yeah, yeah well, it, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't clear before, I mean, X Men yeah. Evolution and yeah. Swan Princess. I mean, it's mostly about the people you work with, I'd say. And then also, the uh, if they're good, nice, and they, they're good people to work with. And also, if you allowed a certain amount of creativity, which you don't always get to have but you know it just varies i mean you know i've had to try to find on any job i'm on something i like doing sometimes it can be the entire package but other times it's like well i really like drawing this character or i like the problems of uh solving this story that issue or whatever or you know you know sometimes it's a small thing sometimes it's everything so it, it It just depends, but you know, I, I think it's good to try to find something in every production that you like doing. There's very few that in my career that I can go and say, boy, I hated that entire thing. There are a few, but I hate <laughs> there are some. Yeah. Do, do you have any project that you're dying to, to work, to, to, to do? Yeah, there, there, there's still one project that I, I'd had, that had in mind for a long time to try to do, but um, I... I It does not look like it's ever going to happen, but you know, it's one of those things that I still, every now and then, when 
the opportunity arises, bring back up and see if I can get any interest in it and stuff. So I, I, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but yeah, there, I've got some things like that, that I've got, a, that I, um, I would love to work on, but don't know if anyone else is interested in them. So. Is there some project you fought for, for to work on? Hmm? Some, some project you fought, fought for to work on, but you, you try to, to work there. You try very hard to work some project in the past. Oh, oh that I would yeah. want to work on? Yeah. I, I see. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, th there were projects that I would have liked to have been involved in that I weren't, wasn't. You know, like uh, back when Disney was doing Tarzan, I thought yeah. I would love to have worked on that. Yeah. And that, that was right up my alley. And uh, yeah, there's a few projects like that that I think, you know, that would be great to work on. Uh, but for can't get a job on it no matter what I do, so. You know, it happens. It happens. Okay, uh, Stephen, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it's been an interesting talk. Uh, all the questions the students had, uh, all the the <laughs> all the projects, all the extensive projects you have. Uh, we 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 don't thank you very much for for give us the time. My pleasure. It was for fun. The time to have you here. Have you in the future? Have you here in flesh and blood? <laughs> no, that'd be great. Yeah, you know, you know, somewhere down the line when things settle down yes. more, that, that I would love uh, to do that. And you can sit with the students and to to fix the the the, the their drones. So uh, thank you sure. very much. Thank you that very much, great. Steven. Uh, uh, we damos por terminada esta plática con Steven. Muchas gracias por por acompañarnos a todos aquí. Este, everyone is saying thank you. Sending the <laughs> my pleasure. Them. Entonces, I hope I didn't bore too many people. No, 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 no. Or insult no. anyone. Or... <laughs> no, thank you very much, Steven. Eh, eh, pues, bueno, muchas gracias a todos. Eh, eh, damos por terminada la, la sesión. Nos vemos la próxima semana para la siguiente para el siguiente webinar. Muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros y hasta la próxima. Thank you, Steven. Thank you very thank you. much. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.